Well, welcome back here to the second of third episodes of Everlasting Summer that I'm going to be doing today. It turned out that this was just too big to edit down to one episode. So, I'm going to do three. So, we are in the start of the endings now, and this is going to be over two parts. I think I'll split it over the two days if I can. I've got to warn you, okay, this gets pretty grim. And I will not blame you, I will not fault you if you don't watch this and if you move on, but you're going to see some pretty dramatic stuff from the game and some pretty hammy acting from me, so it might be worth it. I will leave it up to you. I was so absorbed in my thoughts that I didn't notice that how the darkness stole across the camp. Under other circumstances I would have gone to sleep now, but looking for Lena at night was not a good idea. I got up and slowly wandered aimlessly. Soon the path led me to the sports ground. I stood there for a moment and was about to leave when I heard noises. Clap. Another clap. Something painfully familiar. I ran towards the volleyball court and saw Lena, who was unsuccessfully trying to hit the shuttlecock with the racket. I stood in shock for a long time. My head was completely empty. I just looked at her and felt a sense of joy. Joy at finding her. Joy at seeing her again. I finally came to my senses and decided to approach. But after a couple of steps, I stopped. And what do I say now? Glad I found you. Where have you been? I was worried. After yesterday's conversation, it's very unlikely she wants to see me. And what if Lena asked me why I was looking for her? Why I was worrying? I do not know why myself. Probably it's because she was absent for too long. Maybe if it wasn't her but some other person who I, I know I would have been worried about the same way. Maybe if I behaved differently yesterday she would not have disappeared today. I'm not sure. But I'll try to come up with something adequate. I took another step and stopped again. Maybe, probably, perhaps, not sure. Again and again, these words appeared in my mind, in my life, unconsciously, without my will. But why? For what purpose? I have to make a decision once and for all, although... There are two simple words, yes and no. Finally, it's all clear. I went to the court, approached Lena, smiled and said, Hey. She turned and looked at me. Hi. You were absent all day. Yes, I was walking around. Everything she said was quiet and calm, with no trace of embarrassment or shyness. With no emotions at all, in fact. We worried about you. Although, the only one who worried was me. You shouldn't have. But you can't. You can't just disappear like that. I tried to smile to make my words not sound like a reproach. I don't think anyone cares about that. I care, for one. Why? I read surprise in her eyes. Because, because it's not right. No matter how I tried to be perfectly honest, it came out wrong. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, I won't do this again. It seemed like this conversation was not interesting to her. Silence followed. I just didn't know what else to say, and Lena seemed to be quite content with the silence. Are you any good? I finally said, pointing at the racket. Not very. If you want, I... No, I don't. She walked to the bench and sat down, her racket and, bright, and birdie. Okay. To tell the truth, I did not expect that response. Want to look at stars together? Yes, of course. I sat down beside her. Lena intensely studied the sky. Lots of small lights shined above me. Some of them were brighter, some were barely visible. I never really understood what people see in just sitting back and looking at the stars. After all, here on Earth, they're just small dots of light and it's unlikely that many people know what kind of celestial bodies they are as well as their size and how far they are from us. 
Of course, it's so romantic to enjoy the light of distant stars, but for me it was like staring at a brick wall. It also has its potholes, unevenness in the brickwork, patternness in the stone. A stellar sky in miniature. So what do you see there? Stars, she said mysteriously with her head up. Yes, I know, I see them too. But what's so special about them? I don't know. It seems that they talk to me. There are other people there. They have their own life, probably, much better than ours. And they look they too look at the sky and see Earth, me, and you. Voices of the distant stars. I had already heard that somewhere else. You can call it that. Interesting theory. No. No, the theory is quite common. Lena looked at me. In the dim moonlight I noticed a small tear rolling down her cheek. Or at least I thought I did. I guess I'm just a more, let's say, practical person. She said nothing, just stared at the sky again. But if you think about it, of course, there is endless interstellar space, millions of planets, hundreds of galaxies. It's fascinating. My voice sounded unnaturally excited. You don't need to talk about these things. About what? About this. About everything. No, the stars are... are really beautiful. Why did you come? Now she was crying for sure. I... I... was looking for you. Why? I don't know why, I just was. You found me. Happy now? Well... I mumbled. Why didn't you go to Elisa? What does she have to do with it? Are you trying to say that it's not about her? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Why did you bring this topic up? I thought we'd already cleared everything up. Of course, we didn't clear anything up. To be precise, we didn't even start to. However, I don't understand why this is necessary. You really want to talk about it to myself? If you don't, then why? Because, because, it's because of you. Because of me what? You and Lisa. Me and Elisa what? We don't have a relationship. We don't have anything at all. Don't lie to me. Lena turned away, sobbing quietly. Why is this so important to her? What else can I say if you don't believe me? Tell me the truth. I already told you. Then go to her. Why should I go to her? I don't want to go anywhere. Why are you sitting here and torturing me? Oh Lord, how am I torturing you? Lena didn't answer. I've been looking for you the entire day because I was worried. I came here because you're here. I'm sitting here because I want to be here. What don't you understand? She stopped crying for a moment. Is that true? Of course. I mean something to you. Even taking into account all the things I've just said, this question came to me unexpectedly. Well, yes. If only I could if only you could hear yourself now. She cried, got up, and walked briskly towards the exit of the sports ground. Wait! I caught up with her and grabbed her arm, but she pulled out of my grip. Don't touch me! Now Lena was a totally different person. And I couldn't say that she was aggressive, assertive, or super strong-willed. She just had no doubts about what she was doing. Wait! What did I say? That's all true! Save all this nonsense for her! Good grief. I tried to stop Lena once again, but she glared at me so strongly that I did not dare to argue. I can Im I just imagine how I feel. You make up a bunch of stupid things and now you think that I'm guilty of all mortal sins. Why should you care? I should. She stopped for a moment and looked at me. It's all lies. In my anger I banged my forehead on an iron post. You can just beat yourself up here. I'd seen Lena be many things but not ruthless and indifferent. Wait, let's talk calmly. We have nothing to talk about. 
She crossed the football ground and I trailed behind, trying to in vain to persuade her to listen to me. I don't know why I'm doing this. To prove that I'm right? So I won't be misunderstood? So that I will look better in her eyes? Or is there some other reason? In any case, at that moment I just felt that it was necessary. We came to the square. Lena was pretty fast. I could barely keep up with her. I had to say something. My head was filled with different options, but nothing suitable. Wait! No answer. Listen! No answer. Will you stop it? No answer. We'll wake the whole camp. So what? What's the difference? Strange, but at that moment I was more worried about our behaviour than Lena. She stopped. Thanks for accompanying me. I'll go alone now. Lena said bitterly. You haven't listened to me yet. To me it seems like I've already listened several times even. So what do you want from me? From me? From you? Nothing at all. She sounded more confident than me. There was no trace of doubt in her eyes. What can I say? What can I do? Damn it. I was ready to burst into tears. Don't get so emotional. Nothing happened. Nothing happened? Something definitely happened. You won't lose anything if, I, if you pay no attention to me. Let me decide that. No, seriously, why? There are many pleasant activities you could choose to do. Well, to be honest, I don't need it anyway. If you don't need it, why do you constantly mention Elisa? Lena's face changed. That's just none of your business, get it? No, now it's my business. She looked at me as if she was ready to kill. Why are you bothering me? You have her, so go to her. She won't refuse, I assure you. Lena started screaming, her hair dishevelled, her face flushed and her eyes bloodshot. Calm down, I won't go to her. Why do you even think so? Just see, I'm here now and I'm not going anywhere. She seemed to calm down a bit. What's going on here? I turned around and saw Lazily, uh, Elisa lazily chewing on a bun. I turned around and saw Lazily Elisa chewing on a bun. In the wrong place at the wrong time. This situation is a perfect example. I froze in surprise, not knowing what to say. But Lena was smarter. Time to pass him on. Catch! Elisa looked surprised. No wonder she hadn't heard the entire conversation. What? I said catch! Within a moment, Lena became like she was before, calm and unruffled. What should I catch? Him. She pointed her finger at me with disgust. He complains about how he loves you, about how he cannot live with you and stuff like that. What? Elisa's <laughs> eyes popped open wide. No, that's all wrong. Lena is just joking. I giggled nervously. Why? That's exactly what's happening. Listen, everything has its limits, I said quietly to her. Do you want there to be victims? Why, I suggested you should go to her. I don't know what you're talking about but, uh, here, but uh, don't involve me. You don't know. Lena said it softly, but her voice had a trace of rage in it. Same thing again. And Lisa looked at her, frightened. Listen, I understand that you, well, but I don't know, really, not a single word, not even a single thought about him, I swear. You don't know? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lena jumped at her and, before I realised, smashed Elisa with a powerful right hook. Oh, somebody set up the bolt, the, 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 uh, the pit of jelly. Hey, hey. Well... I'd understand a simple slap, but such a blow could break someone's jaw. Elisa collapsed and seemed to lose consciousness. What should I do? Okay, right, final option. Do not interfere or help Elisa. As we've probably all forgotten by now, the last one is help Elisa. So we help Elisa. What are you doing? I ran over to the falling girl and tried to figure out if she was alive at all. 
Are you completely out of your mind? Do you, if you want me to leave to shut up to do anything else, fine. But this is turning into a complete madhouse. Maybe you need a straight jacket so nobody will get injured. injured. Lena stood, clutching her fist. You could even break your hand with such a blow. You, you, you don't understand anything. The tears welled up, flowing down her face, and she fled from the square. It seemed to me that I could still hear Lena slobbing, sobbing while I was bringing Elisa around. Finally, she came back to consciousness. You alive? Are you okay? Elisa moved a jaw from the left to right. I'll live. I helped her up. I told you about her. Well, that doesn't matter now. You have to get to the infirmary. It's too late for the infirmary. I'll just have a good night's rest. In the morning, I'll go there. Okay, I'll go with you. I can't refuse, Elisa said, trying to give me a smile. All the way, we kept silent. She was probably not really able to talk, and I couldn't find the right words to say. All of this was a real shock for me. I found myself a mere spectator of a drama in which she stood, which I just took on the main part. After the door closed behind Elisa, I stood for a long time and looked at her cabin. What shall I do after all this? Fatigue overcame me. I had to sleep. I think Lena is now in such in a state where she is unlikely to adequately assess reality. Completely broken. I fell down onto the bed and drifted to sleep. Wow. Just wow. Somehow, I woke up in my apartment. It didn't trigger any emotions at all. Yet another day of my life, that's all. I got out of the bed and went up to the computer. A message window flashed on the taskbar. I sat down and stared at the monitor. Somebody wrote to me, and that means that somebody still needs me. The message contained only two words. Wake up. What do they want from me? An unknown ID. Is this spam? And what does it mean? Wake up. I'm not sleeping anymore. The window still kept flashing. I tried to close it but fouled. Instead another one popped out. And another one and another one and all of them contained the same. Wake up! What the hell do you want from me? Soon the whole screen was blazing with identical messages. I couldn't bear any more, grabbed it and smashed it against the wall with all my strength. A phone rang. Strange, but who could that be? I picked up the phone and heard just, wake up! On the other end, thousands of voices, men, women, children were screaming, wake up! I smashed the phone on the floor, but it didn't break and kept ringing. In a moment, the whole room was filled with strangers. They were grabbing my hands, peering into my eyes, and screaming, screaming, WAKE UP! I jumped off my bed in a cold sweat. Huh? What a dream. I came to my senses in a couple of minutes and took a look at the clock. It's 5pm. How long have I slept? All the events of yesterday flew through my head, searching for Lena, the devastating conversation, Elisa defeated. I really have to talk to her, maybe she cooled down overnight. I dressed, went out of the cabin, hesitated a little while gathering my thoughts, and then went headed to Lena's cabin. What shall I say? How do I begin the conversation? I just can't go in with, hi, how are you? I was just passing by. There's no way I should lecture her straight off the bat. Not reaching a specific solution, I knocked. Nobody answered. I knocked again and then pulled on the doorknob. It's not locked, that's odd. However, there was nobody inside. Well, that means Lena's not here. 
I'll grab some food. I might find her in the canteen. Along the rows of cabins, I didn't meet a single pioneer. That's odd, too. It's always crowded here at this time of day. Nobody was at the square, either. <laughs> Say, punched anyone lately? Coming to the canteen, I started to get seriously concerned. It's time for dinner, but there's no sign of the hungry pioneer crowds. It was, if only it was just that. The canteen was closed. Looks like something has happened during the day. I sat down on the porch and started to consider the situation. All the pioneers were gone. Without any warning. Well, of course, it's hard to say that this camp or my way of arriving here is normal, but I hadn't encountered any completely inexplicable stuff during this week yet. Well, possibly except for Yulana. There's lots of strange things, but... Maybe they're hiding in that bunker. I chuckled aloud. While this is very, to put it mildly, mysterious, I was nowhere near experiencing a, ma a panic attack. No, it's just that they have left. I almost jumped out of my skin. Lena was standing next to me. You, you, Tu, you can't just sneak up on people like that. You nearly gave me a heart attack. Sorry, she said calmly. Now her words dawned on me. Left? Hold on, hold a sec. What do you mean by just left? The session's over. And the camp leader? She had some business to take care of in the town, so she went with them. Okay, and what about you? I stayed. Lena was talking with complete calmness, as if everything that was happening is completely normal and routine. How? Why is that? What's the problem? When the session is over, the children depart for their homes, don't they? And when was it decided that today was the last day of the session? You won't believe this, but on the very first day. Moreover, Olga announced this at lineup. Yeah, even those at lineup that I attended, the last thing that crossed my mind was listening to the camp leader's announcements. Then why didn't anyone tell me anything? I've waited for a chance to get out of this damned camp for so long, and when it finally happened, I obviously slept through it. Well, that's exactly my style. I asked them not to. Even if you asked, didn't ask not to, Olga... Hold on, what? I asked for it, said Lena with the same confidence. And what, you asked them to leave me behind too? Yes. And don't you think that's all a little, uh, absolutely wrong? I started shouting. No, that's completely normal. I took a good look at Lena. Not a single emotion has crossed her face since the beginning of our talk. It looks like the girl was standing right in front of me now is not the kind of girl that's afraid of crickets, blushes every occasion and reads romance novels. Okay, I got it. Looks like this situation is directly connected to my mystical arrival at this camp. Just who are you? Me? This morning I was Lena, she replied patiently. Oh yes, and I'm Optimus Prime, born nine million years ago in the highlands of Scotland. There can be only one. I wasn't afraid of her or anything around myself at that moment. I was just bursting with anger from within. Nice to meet you, I'm Lena. Okay, now, let's get serious. I think that what you're saying is frankly impossible. Today, as it turns out, is the last day. Somehow, I don't know a thing about it, and the camp leader departs with everyone, leaving me behind just because you asked for it. Don't you find that all somewhat abnormal? Maybe I do. Are you hiding something? Maybe I am. Then spit out everything you've got. I had told you already. I buried my face in my hands and took a deep breath. Okay, and what am I supposed to do in this situation? I don't know. And what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll go with the flow. Well, here's the flow, I hissed, abruptly spreading my hands. And why are you worrying so much? For the first time, a flicker of interest has appeared on her face. And how do you expect me to feel? Glad? Well, not really. But you yourself wanted it. Me? You're mad! And who said yesterday that he cares and that he wants to be with me? 
What's that got to do with this? I pretend not to understand, but was finally starting to dawn on me what she was driving at. Your wish was granted. Yeah, sure. I mumbled under my breath. Well, here I am, with you. That doesn't explain in any way what happened. There's always a couple of tricks which that could help one succeed. And you? That is how? Yes. A smile crossed her face. Hmm. If I'd known that you were so cunning from the very beginning. To tell the truth, I kind of liked this whole situation. Well, not really liked, but I was curious. Of course, I'm very sorry that I couldn't have escaped with everyone else. However, I'm having a little tater tate with Lena now. That might mean that I get a chance to see the real her. And if the answer and, and all the answers they're just longing for could be right here and not in some mysterious town which everyone is headed for. Okay, what are we going to do now? See you later, Mega Racer. We. She smiled. Yeah, we. We're the only ones staying here. The canteen's closed, and I seriously doubt there's any, there's any food left here anyway. Of course, Olga could return in the foreseeable future, but what does it matter? Okay, it doesn't matter. Any suggestions? Hmm, what do you want? She asked with a sly smile. I would have grabbed something to eat, and then I don't know. Well, let's go and have something. Where to? There should be some food left in my cabin. Okay, deal. We went in and Lena rum rummaged around the desk drawer. Well, well, there are cookies. Want some? She handed me a half-open pack of biscuits. Oh, oh, how cute, I sneered. Why? Biscuits. Like in my childhood. I guess. She smiled and sat next to me. Well? I asked with my mouth full. What? What are we going to do? I don't know. She wistfully gazed out of the window. But what do you want? I... But really, what do I want? A mere half hour ago, my only thought was how to get away from this damned camp. But now, right here, next to her, something seemed to change. Well, I don't know either. Think harder. She drew herself closer and gazed into my eyes. Well, I, you know, uh, my face was blushing and my mind was racing. Not just because I was in such extreme proximity to a girl that quite clearly wants something from me, but mainly because that girl was Lena. Well? She studied me closely. Lena, I... What? To say that she didn't look like herself was nothing. I was not afraid of this metamorphosis at all, rather I was afraid of myself. What could I do in such a situation? I... Didn't you want to be with me? She whispered into my ear seductively. I did. I mean, I do. Then what's the problem? You know, it's all so... Besides, I have some other circumstances. What circumstances? She pulled away from me. Well, various circumstances. You don't prefer, do you? Lena laughed. Hell no, how could you think that? Looks like I blushed even harder. Then what's the problem? Are you sure you want that? I tried to change the subject. After all, a week ago I had my own normal life, a life where everything was strictly tied to the well-organized and where there was no place for girls. And now I'm in some kind of mysterious camp with Lena sitting next to me and hinting towards something. How should I behave in such a situation? Yes, she frowned. Of course I do, of course I do. What's the problem? Well, it's my... I was behaving like I wasn't even 17, which was how I looked now, as if I was much younger. Mine too, she smiled. I had to decide what to do next, now, after the session was closed and all the pioneers were gone. I had to seek answers. Above all, I had to beware this girl that could change her behavior and even her character so easily at will. But 
At that exact moment, I was possessed by one thought. Oh, what the hell? Well, if you don't mind. I closed my eyes. She said nothing, just smiled and moved even closer. Our lips locked in a long kiss. I forgot everything at that moment. I forgot about this weird camp. I forgot about the local pioneers, which were in fact gone. I forgot about our wacky camp leader. I forgot about my past life and about my future, if it would ever come. Right now, the only one who mattered was Lena, her soft lips, her warmth that poured deep into my soul, burning me from the inside. I gently moved her aside. Hold on. Don't you think that this is way too... fast? Why? She smiled and looked at me in such a way that I immediately felt ready to drown in her eyes. You're sure, aren't you? I am. I whispered quietly. At that moment, I truly loved Lena. I wanted to hold her tighter and never let go. She felt the same, of course. Time flashed by too fast and we became as one. When I woke up, it was already dark outside. I got out of bed, put on my trousers and had a stroll around the room. What was that? Just an animal instinct, maybe? Or it was something more? No, it's all wrong, completely wrong. I'm stuck in this camp. I've lost a chance to get out of here. And most of all, I'm with a girl who probably has a split personality and manic, de a manic depressive disorder. I looked at the sleeping Lena. Anyhow, she's marvellous. Everything that's happened between us literally only a couple of hours ago flashed before my eyes and I felt shivers up my spine. Now, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but if I could have returned back in time, I would have done exactly the same thing. I smiled widely and sat down next to her on the bed. It was close to 10pm. Well, it's probably time to get up. I gave Lena a gentle nudge on the shoulder. She opened her eyes. Good morning. Well, evening, in fact. Hi. She smiled tenderly. Time to get up, sleepyhead. Are you in a hurry? Well, no. But we're completely alone together in this camp. So what? She had a good look at me. Well, nothing. When will Olga return? Is that important to you? She got a heavy look on her face. Well, without food, we're going to die here. I laughed. You're free to leave, then. She looked away towards the wall. But how can I leave? On the bus, of course. There are no buses here. Then why do you think there's a bus stop for the bus route 410 here? Frankly, I don't know. I told Olga that I had some matters to urgently resolve here with you and we'd come later. What? I felt that I'd been struck by lightning. I didn't know what I should be more surprised about, the fact that there are buses passing here or the fact that the camp leader agreed to leave two pioneers behind in an empty camp just like that. What I said? You mean we can just leave? Go on, no one's holding you. She said all that while sitting utterly still, in fact, so still that her words gave me grave cold chills. Okay, I'm sorry I reacted away that way, it's just everything that's happened today has been a total surprise for me. You didn't look so surprised a few hours ago, at least not some of you. I've probably said something wrong, completely wrong. Well, don't get offended. We won't be staying here until the end of times, right? If there's a way to leave... Lena didn't say anything. I looked at her back and tried to understand what she's thinking. Fine! She exclaimed cheerfully after a pause and then jumped off the bed and started to dress quickly. What a shame. Go on, pack your stuff. Meet me at the square in ten minutes. She leaned over and gave me a passionate kiss. All right. I stepped out of her cabin and ran to the camp leader's cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pack. 
I tossed my winter clothing into a bag. <sighs> Olga doesn't really seem to brighten my opinion. Yes, you're probably right. I tossed my winter clothing into a bag, shoved my phone into my pocket and headed to the square. Fifteen minutes have passed already, but Lena still wasn't here. I justified the, with, with the fact that she has lots of stuff to pack and accordingly needs much more time to get ready. However, she didn't come even in half an hour and I started to suspect something. My legs ushered me to her cabin before I realised it. I flung the door open and saw Lena lying on the bed. Everything around her was soaked in blood. The bed sheets, the blankets. The floor was wet with blood and I can see a huge slit on Lena's forearm. I ran to her and started shaking her on the, by the shoulders. Lena! Lena! Why? She was still conscious. Hi, Simeon. A weak smile froze on her lips. Hang on. Don't you pass out. I'll think of something right now. Listen, everything's going to be fine. You're not going to die. Of course, I didn't believe it myself. Lena had slit her veins from her elbow all the way down to her wrist. It was a deep cut, and given all the time I'd spent waiting for her in the square, she'd bled a lot. Probably even an ambulance wouldn't be able to do anything by now, and there we were, and here in an empty camp, away from the world, Lena had zero chance of survival. How stupid can you be? I embraced and held her tightly. Tears were running down my cheeks, disappearing in her hair. I'd never cried so hard in my entire life. Fool! Why did you have to cut down the road? Everybody does it across the street and you cut down the road. I'm sorry. It happened as it did, she muttered faintly. But why? Why? I am tired. So tired. Lena went silent. I looked straight into her eyes. She was still conscious, but the last flicker of life was quickly dying in her. I am so tired of it all. Wearing a mask, suffering. I just wanted to be with you. But you've left me too. I never went anywhere. Here I am. Why? What have you done? I'm sorry. I was choked with tears, unable to say anything. I'm sorry. I'll be seeing you. Later. I embraced her even tighter. Lena's breath was getting weaker and soon enough it stopped forever. Horror struck, I jumped away from the bed. My eyes went dark, my heart was beating wildly, and I spotted the blood-stained knife lying on the floor. A moment later I was holding it in my hands. The blade halted a hair's breadth away from my wrist. But why? How would that help? I sat there completely freaked out and just stared at Lena. No, you aren't dead. I exploded in hysterical laughter. Come on, sleepyhead, it's time to wake up. I said softly and shook her by the shoulders. But Lena didn't wake up. What am I, I, what have I done? I jumped out of the cabin in horror and ran like mad. I don't know how much time passed, but finally I wore myself out and collapsed on the ground. Hostile silence was all around me and only the stars looked down at me in quiet rebuke. These were the same stars that Lena admired yesterday. Yet another crying spell tore me apart. Why? Why did she do it? Because I left her? Where had I gone? I never left her and wasn't going to. Only at this moment did I realise that she was truly important to me. I realised that despite all her quirks, everything that happened today, everything that happened during the short period of our acquaintance, she'd suddenly become the most precious thing in my life. And I, I instantly forgot about her, about her feelings as soon as I heard about that damned bus. Indeed, I can't justify her act, but how could I have stopped thinking about her at all? I lay there for a long time watching the stars. 
The trees were peacefully swaying in the gentle night breeze above my head. The trees didn't give a damn about what was happening to me. The landscape seemed familiar. Suppressing my tears, I headed back towards the camp. Everything here seemed to be the same as yesterday, as a few days ago. Gender's memorial, the cabins of the pioneers. I was all torn up inside. I felt like the pain would tear my body into millions of little pieces any moment now. I fell on my knees and began punching the ground until my fists were completely stained with blood. If only I'd realised just a bit earlier. Just a moment earlier. I'm not asking for more. She was so... So... Even the slightest of hints was enough for her. Only at this moment did I realise that Lena had died and part of me had died with her. Probably the part of me I would call the best. I came to my senses after a while, standing at her cabin. The blood had dried up already. The moonlight was no longer reflected in it. I went to her bed and sat down next to Lena's body. I was terribly afraid to be here, but felt that I had to tell her something. I'm sorry, I started. It's far too late, of course, but if you can hear me out there somewhere, just remember, please, I will love you forever, for the rest of my life. And that was the plain truth. I'm sorry that I ignored your feelings. I'm sorry that I always thought only about myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. It was me who should have died, not you. I covered her body with a blanket and slowly left the cabin. <laughs> 